So now is our time for meditation, so I invite you to get comfortable in your chair, get things out of your lap, close your eyes if you're comfortable, and begin taking some deep breaths, breathing in and breathing out. Tell your mind and your body that it is time for you to relax. Relax into this moment. Breathing in and breathing out. We acknowledge the presence and the power of God here in this moment. That beautiful breath of God that breathes us. We begin to feel peace and calm in our bodies. Now I invite you to think of what you feel like is an obstacle to your moving through the challenges that you're facing. What is it that you feel like could be holding you back at this particular time? And now I invite you to imagine with me that all of the obstacles are gone. The road ahead is clear. There's nothing in the way to keep you from having your heart's desires. And I invite you to see that and feel that in the silence. This is the truth that we know. God is in all things, all ways. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. There is no place where God is not. That is our first principle of knowing. And what we know is that we are divine beings. We express as much of God through us as is possible for us to believe in as that. That's our principle too. The divinity is here right now in this moment in each and every one of us. And so when we see it rightly in our minds, when we believe and know at the core of our being that God is all there is and that we are divine, the only thing holding us back is our not seeing it come to fruition because of a barrier or an obstacle. So we let go of that and we say we allow all of the good right here right now we pray that we meditate on that we hold that in our mind all of the good that we can possibly imagine coming to us and through us is here now in this moment ready for us to receive it and then we pay attention we pay attention to how spirit is guiding and directing us and so we take action which is our last principle we move into whatever the steps are that we are shown
so we're never without. Everything that we need is already here. When we believe it, we trust it, we know it, we claim it, and we live it. These are our teachings. And we know this to be true. We are not victims. We are incredibly powerful spiritual beings. And so with hearts filled with gratitude, we experience what that good looks like in our mind. And we hold that. We hold that vision, knowing that it's already ours. The kingdom of God is right here, right now. We're so grateful to have these teachings and to know the truth of our being and to know the truth of how it is. And so we say thank you, Indwelling Spirit, for that guidance and for that direction and for that knowing that all is truly well. This is the kingdom of God. We are expressions of it when we choose to live from that place of knowing. And for this, we are so grateful. And we pray this now through the name and the nature of the indwelling presence, the Christ. And so it is, and so we allow it. And now whenever you're ready, just open your beautiful eyes. Become present to the spiritual tools for life. I read a quote this week from Rumi that said, life is a balance between holding on and letting go, right? Well, this past couple of weeks, we haven't had a lot of control, have we? We might have wanted to hold on to some things, but nature had another idea. My son told me, Matt said, you know, Mom, Nature's always going to take care of itself. It's been doing it for millions and billions of years, right? It is doing what it needs to do to cleanse itself, to blow away what no longer needs to be here, to clean its oceans, to cool the oceans and the rivers and the waters of the earth. It is just doing what it's supposed to do. We just happen to be sitting on it while it's doing its thing cleansing, renewing, you know. We just have to look at nature and know that it is resilient. And so I love that because these 10 days, you know, and more, some of you had more than 10 days without power or running water. Um, miracles happened. I don't know about you, but I witnessed kindness and miracles all over the place. We had neighbors that had internet. We didn't have internet for two weeks, but we had neighbors that had it and gave out their password and we all gathered in their driveway. That's how I got to be church last week. I got to be on Zoom. I got to see some of the peeps because I was sitting on a cushion in the drive. I rode my bicycle over to my neighbors. I had the cushion on the back. I had my computer in a satchel and I, you know, they never even knew I was there. I just sat there and used their internet. It's amazing what you can do, how resourceful you can be when you have something you want to do, isn't it? And the kindness of people. John and Vivian sent us water bottles. Ken brought us a generator. Ken and Joyce had one they didn't need because their power came back on right away. And so we had two houses run by one generator for a while so we could keep some of the food. The kindnesses were just all over the place. Matt and I were brought to tears when the Tampa Fire Department drove past our neighborhood honking in the heart and giving out these big cases of 10-year shelf life water. That's what my husband used to do when he was on the planet. He used to deliver water, and it made Matt and I cry because it was just like, oh, my God, my, my husband's still taking care of us after all this time. You know, I saw that fire department T-shirt, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> And then I go into Walmart, and I'm with my grocery list, and this 
pro this produce guy comes up to me and says, how can I help you? And I was like, well, I need avocados and bananas and onions. He said, well, they're there and they're there. And he said, when you get ready for the onions, let me know. <laughs> okay. He carries me over to the onions and he goes through the bins. He said, how many do you need? And I said, three. And he said, okay, I'm picking you out the best ones. I mean, who does that? Who does that? I was like, oh my God, I was just blown away. Everywhere I went, I saw people helping people, giving out things all over the place. I know Kara and you both did a lot of volunteer. I saw you giving out water. I saw it on Facebook. So a lot of people were helping. I I know, it was heavy. It was he Those big cases of water were heavy. And I called and I called some people I couldn't get through to, but those that I did, you know what the most popular word that they said was? I am so blessed. That's what they said over and over again. I am so blessed. That's what happens when you have spiritual tools in your toolbox and you know about prayer and meditation, you move through things with so much more ease and grace than the people that you know that don't have these tools in their toolbox, right? That don't have the faith that we have, that everything's going to be fine. So we are incredibly resilient. I am amazed if you had seen this property, what it looked like a week ago and what it looks like today. The work that went into getting this ready so we could be together is just amazing. And when we see with our spiritual eyes, we can see the good in everything. That's what we're striving for, is seeing things with our spiritual eyes. So it's essential that we remember that our souls picked this time to be here because we are helping this consciousness raising of our planet. We pick this to go through these things together so we can see and remember that there's kindness. We have witnessed some horrendous things in our country, but now we're seeing another side of us, the side that we know is the more dominant side of us. But we're getting to see it, aren't we? And we're getting to feel it, and we're getting to experience it. Because every moment, every movement, what is going on in the universe is a movement toward love. I grant you that is what is going on. It's a movement toward love. And when we open our hearts and instead of closing up in fear, if we open our hearts, we serve the divine process of our souls. And it doesn't matter how we choose to participate, whether we're being the calm in the middle of the storm for our families or our neighbors or whether we're giving money to a hurricane relief, or whether we're actually showing up and doing the work like some of our folks did here. It's all important. Because the main thing is that we're choosing to be centered in love. That's really all that matters, you know? It's really all that matters. So, we didn't get to be together in person for the first two weeks of the month, so we're starting in the third week with our new uh, theme for the month. But I want to tell you, Reverend Eileen and Kathy Schwanke, the two sisters that are in Texas, pulled it off. We had a prayer service on October the 2nd. Some of you were there. And then we had a service, a real service on Zoom last Sunday. So we didn't really miss a beat. It's just unfortunate that most of us didn't have internet or a nice neighbor like I did that would allow us to participate. But we are moving into... Let go and let God. Now, who would have thought that this would be the theme? We planned this 13 months ago, right? So here we are, and this is about this, you know, we're doing this life chart. For those of you that are new, we, we've concentrated on every aspect of our lives because we wanted to build spiritual tools for every aspect of our lives. And so here we are, you know, like 10 months in, and so we're looking at creative expression how we're showing up. Let go and let God. And how appropriate is that? Because we've just let go of a whole lot. So we have this new affirmation that we're saying together, which could not be more perfect. Let's say it together. I freely release 
all that is not part of my divine pattern, I affirm and accept all that is. I love that. I have a reading today from Emmett Fox. You know, I'm, I'm just crazy about his work. This book is called Make Your Life Worthwhile. He says, a problem is not a barrier, it's a challenge. The appearance of a problem of any kind in your life means that the time has come to take a step forward. And the taking of that step will, of course, be signalized by the solving of the problem. The real step forward is always a mental step. The only progress we ever make is mental progress. All things be ready if our minds be so, and this means that all progress is a change of mind. The universe is always ready when we are. Man discovered fire as an answer to the challenge of the cold. If the whole world were tropical, we wouldn't have spent our time trying to solve that, right? Man discovered music as the answer to a desire for a higher emotional expression. In your personal life, a problem is a challenge. It's not a barrier saying, you shall not pass. It is a problem, and to every problem there is a solution. Find the solution through scientific prayer. Your problem will then be solved, and mentally you will have taken a definite step forward which will be with you throughout eternity. The way to God is always open. So in the midst of all the chaos, I was amazed at people's responses when I called to check on them. And, and even when I went to have my chiropractic adjustment this last week, my chiropractor said, you know, at first I thought, oh, I lost all those trees in the back of my house. And she said, and then I thought, oh, now I can see the canal. <laughs> I couldn't see the water before. People are looking for the blessings in all of this. And I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. When we look for goodness and kindness, it abounds everywhere, you know? It abounds everywhere. So the timing of this, to me, is just critical because think about it. Today is our kickoff of Adventures in Faith. <laughs> We've already had quite the adventure in faith, right? But now we're going to take another spiritual look at Adventures in Faith. For the next five weeks, we're concentrating on the game of life and how to play it. It's a classic prosperity unity book by Florence Shin. And so that's the groups that we're talking about. Um, we're going to be hearing about it on Sundays, and then we're going to be going off in our little groups and talking about it and learning about it and learning how to make it real in our lives. She hones in with simplified language in this little tiny book on the teachings of Jesus and just how relevant those teachings are to us in this day and time. She interprets the scriptures metaphysically so we can see how if we understand and use these spiritual laws, we can live our lives in more ease and grace. So today we are in Proverbs and we're going to metaphysically interpret Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet and all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. It's about staying in that centered place of faith, isn't it? It's like no matter what you see, stand in the truth of your knowing that God is in the midst of it. What are the issues of life? It's the outcome of our habitual thought. So that's why we're talking about creativity. We're talking about principle three. We're talking about imagination and how we image things. Because when Florence Shin was looking at this scripture, she said that the keeping of our heart with all diligence is our imagination faculty. 
she's talking about that because she says in order to play the game of life successfully, we need to train that thing. We need to train that imaging faculty in our brain because can't we go to the dark side and imagine all kinds of scary things that can happen? So she says we need to train that thing and faithful practice of that and persistence in the course of staying on the high, high consciousness, right, that we know is the way will lead us to mastery. Jesus, our way shower, taught that our words are play such a leading role in our lives because he said by your words you're justified and by your words you're also condemned. You're speaking. You are a divine being. When you're speaking it, you're speaking your truth, right? So you want to be paying attention to what you're saying out loud because it's all about consciousness, every bit of it. And so Florence Shin goes on to talk about that imagination faculty that part of our brain that imagination does is like scissors it's always cutting out and tasting and leaving things in our subconscious and eventually all those things start gathering up and kind of get the best of us so everything that we see registers in our subconscious so we want to be patient and we want to train our consciousness we want to train our imagination on what it is because we know principle three is what we focus on expands so if we see something we don't like we change it in how we feel about it in our minds we switch turn the switch off right we have control over that so she says when you understand how your mind works then you get it and you know how to control that imagination that imaging faculty because number one there are three departments of your mind and the first one is the subconscious. And it is collecting everything you see and everything you hear and everything you feel and leaving it up there. And when you're focusing on it a whole lot, it's going, oh, okay, that's what you want. Bam, you've got that in your life. That's how it works. So we want to pay attention to what we're thinking about because everything makes an impression on your subconscious. It stores it all there. It's like the hard drive of your computer body. It's what it is. And then the conscious mind, the conscious mind is like the movie screen. It's watching everything. You're the, you're the director and you're the person, you're the main person in the play too. So it's playing it. It's watching everything that's going on around you. That's your mortal part of you. The human mind sees all the appearances. It's your conscious mind. And then your super conscious mind. That is the God in you. That is the divine pattern of you. That is the Christ in you that wants to live from that place. And it knows your soul's purpose. It knows exactly why you're here. It knows the potential that you have to grow into being all that you are. It knows that. And we get glimpses of it, the perfection that our lives can be. We get glimpses of it. And we kind of know what it can be. Well... Florence tells a story in the book about how important this imagination is. And she says that there was a lady who, when she was a young girl, she always played widow. She walked around with a black dress and a veil, and she played like she was a widow as a child. And then it was like a focus. Everybody thought, oh, it's a little weird, but, you know, it's her thing. Okay, it's her thing. It's what she does, you know. They, they put up with it. And then she grew up and she met the person of her dreams, fell in love, got married, and a short time later, he made his transition. And then she put on those black clothes and she wore those clothes for years. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on expands. Where you put your energy and think about it, what you see in your mind that's why i had you in meditation seeing no obstacles to you getting whatever it is that you wish because that's how powerful we are nothing and no one is against us it is us you see we are the ones so it's important that we train our subconscious mind by paying attention to everything that we think we say we feel our actions that we take that's what our consciousness is so don't forget Imagination is a doorway to dreams. 
It's the vehicle of creativity in our lives, and it's the momentum of exploration. So we can liter literally and figuratively cut those things that no longer serve us. We can let go of those ideas, those things that are no longer useful to us, just like the hurricane took away things that we probably don't need anymore, right? And we can create new ones new goals, new ideas, new ways of being, and on health and wealth and on relationships and on whatever it is that brings to you your perfect self-expression. Then in the second chapter of her book, the first sentence of the second chapter of Florence's book says, one of the greatest messages given to the race from the scriptures is that God is our supply and that we, we can release through our spoken word all that belongs to us by divine right. Well, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? That you could speak into the universe that which you desire. Ask and you shall receive. That's what it's all about. Believe before you see. That's what faith is all about. Just as Jesus taught us, you thank God before you even see it. So one of the most basic spiritual premises is this, and I want you to hear this. We can only receive that which we see ourselves receiving. We limit ourselves because when our superconscious gives us the idea of what our ideal is, we go, oh, well, you know, I don't have enough money to do that. I don't have enough time to do that. I'm too old to do that. We foo-foo all of those things that our superconscious knows we are capable of. So that's why we have to train our minds to know better and to do better. Sometimes we can't even hold on to our dreams, so we need someone to hold on our, our dreams for us, to see it for us. That's what mastermind groups are about. That's what prayer partners are about. I spend an hour to an hour and a half with my prayer partner every single Friday. Never miss it. Never miss it, because that's when I speak out into the universe that which my heart desires, and she prays and holds that for me, and vice versa. That's what we can do for each other, you see. And sometimes these relationships, these prayer partners, I know Ralph and Cheryl know this. They've had a group for years back in Chicago. When you come to small groups and you participate, you can probably find a prayer partner someone to mastermind with you, to hold the dreams that you can't see right now because of devastation in your life. But you can find someone that will hold it for you, and I guarantee you it will lift you out of despair, and you will see it. You will know it. You will live that truth. So I think it's time to let go and let God be in charge of this ride that we're on, right? Let go. Surrender. It's okay. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. It's time to let go of the beliefs that no longer serve. And put these spiritual tools to practice. You know what these five principles are. So let God be God in you. Enough preaching. Time for jokes. So there was this man who was, had served in, uh, as a surgeon in the Marines. He got out, and he decided uh, to be a school teacher. And so he's about to be um, his first day on the job. But just before this, he hurts his back. And they put one of those plaster casts all the way around his torso. But the thing of it is, he can still move around. He puts his shirt on. Nobody can see it. But he gets the word before he goes to the school that he's got one of the rowdiest groups of kids on the campus. So he gets to the classroom. He goes over. And he opens up the window, and they're all just watching. They've already heard he's an ex-Marine. They watch, they watch, they're watching him. He sits down at his desk, and the breeze blows, and the tie flies up, and he grabs a stapler, and he staples it to his chest. <laughs> he never had any trouble with discipline in his class for the rest of the year. Superman. There was dead silence, by the way. So I want to close with Myrtle Fillmore. She says, 
Nature is surely the glorified face of good. See the beauty about you, and you do see the manifestation of the infinite mind. May we keep an open mind as we move through this restoration process and really try to see it rightly. Try to see that more good is just on its way to us. And that's the way it truly is. God bless. Thank you. Now's the time in our service when we get to give from our good back into this sweet community. So I invite you to take your tithes and offerings in your hand and we'll say our blessings together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so.